think it's all right. Ready? Mm-hmm. Hey guys, it's May May and my trusty sidekick. Oh, Vinny is here. <laughs> you sound happy today. Well, I'm kind of glad to be back at work. <laughs> it's been insane, but I'm glad to be back. We've had a good time. We had a little break. Um, some of you guys may not realize that if you follow me on Instagram, you know, because I Instagram so much stuff this weekend. Um, but we took a little three-day trip, a little vacation. We did. Went up to Helen, Georgia for a few days. We did. We were in Helen, Georgia, and um, we had so much fun. Do you know what they made me do? We you made know. you do it. They made me ride a five-mile trail up in the woods, in the mountain woods. <laughs> Five miles. The boys were on ATVs. Vince and I were in a side-by-side, and uh, I was beside myself for a good part of that trip. It was pretty scary. I was very proud of you. But you I lived through it. You didn't out much at all. I lived through it. That was pretty good. I was glad that I lived through it, because you just never know now. Well, you're here today, so we're glad. I'm here today to tell about it. So, today's project, that was a good segue, today's project is this. Okay, so this was sent to me by a subscriber, and I messed up. I did not put your card with it. I saved this out and I put your card elsewhere. So if you sent this to me, tell me so I can give you credit. If you're watching today, especially. But this was sent to me. This is a post-it note holder. Holds a little post-it notes. And from what I could tell, this was kind of a either a kit that was made or she did this on like a um, on like an electronic cutting machine because this is perforated. These little bins here are perforated. Let me see if I can get them where I can show you. Anyway, so I decided just to kind of make one like it. And you're not going to believe how great this guy is. Super easy and great for gift giving. Okay, I have not stuck my post-it note in there yet, but that does stick in there. This is the one I made to look like it. This is the pen she sent me. And, ready for this? I'm going to help you with this because these little mini pens, I went online, I went to Amazon and I found four different ones that you, if you want to purchase them from Amazon, I put my affiliate link under the video. It's already in the description for you guys. So there's, th there were, um, they don't look exactly like this. Some of them do, but some of them don't, but like there are the G2 ones that have the little click, which I think are super cute and they will slide in here. And there was some colorful ones that looked a lot like this, but there were a lot more on Amazon, if you want to go and look, there are a lot of different, just put in mini gel pens. Um, but if you want to use my affiliate link, you can do that below. And what was I going to tell you? Oh, here's the thing about it though. This is what matters. The little pen holders in the middle here. So this little guy slides in and that little pen um, top grips on. See how it grips? If you get one that has a little pen top in a different spot, you want to pay attention to that because some of them may be way up high and some of them may be longer. So just pay attention to what pen you purchase so you can make sure you put this in the right spot. But I think they'll all pretty much fit. That's pretty good advice. I wouldn't have thought of that. Well, thank you. That's my job. Um, I don't mind patting you on the back when you come up I with something pretty it. genius. I appreciate it. Well, I noticed it because when I was making it, I thought, hmm, what if my pen has a place in a different spot? Anyway, pay attention to that. All right, so check this out. This guy is so easy to make. We're going to make a Christmas one today. Maybe even a couple of them, but um, so easy to do. Here's it. Paper. Actually, cardstock. This is the Brutus Monroe. What color is this one? I need to tell you. It's red. Hold on a second. It's red? Scarlet. It's called Scarlet. And listen, in the Crafter After Show, we're announcing a sale. Don't go shopping yet. Do not shop yet. I love y'all, but don't shop yet. That, I'm telling you that because I love you. Vince we has lost his aware. mind, and he's de decided to do a fall break, give you a break on prices. <laughs> and Look, I don't know what happened. It just did. So y'all just, you know, congratulations. So there'll be a sale later. We'll describe it. Uh, we'll tell you about the sale in the Crafter After Show. And if you're trying to shop on the store right now, it's closed. That's why. If it's not closed now, it will be in a minute because Amanda's getting that sale ready for you guys. Okay, so don't shop yet. All right, this is eight and a half by 11 cardstock in scarlet. And what I'm going to do is put this into my trimmer. And this is so easy, guys. I'm going to cut this. I've put it in on the 11 inch side. So I'm putting it on the longer side. Okay, we're going to cut this in three and a half inch strips. So I've got one. And then two. And then one more. You can get three of these from one piece of cardstock. That's the exciting part. 
Because listen, Vince, you know what we're doing right now? We're making our Christmas gifts. We're making our uh, giveaways for our um, craft fair tables. Mm. We're making, I'm thinking of all the places you can use it. We're making our name place cards. We're making our party favors. We're doing so much right now. This is perfect for that, okay? All you're left with is this strip of red, which as you know, you can use this somewhere. This is not wasted, okay? So three and a half by eight and a half. That's it. Three of them from one sheet. <clears throat> now we will score it. Hmm. I covered if up my scoreboard. If you can board. find a scoreboard, I there it is. It up. Let I'm me get it for you. Up and you get that out. Uh, we may have to do a little mic adjustment to get it. But Perfect. We got, we got it. it. Okay. So on your scoreboard, okay, you're going to need that. You're going to need your embossing tool. Um, and here's what you're going to do. Ready? You're going to score it at three and a half. This is really thick, good quality cardstock, so I like to do that twice, okay? You're going to score it at four. You're going to score it at four and a half. And that is it, okay? Let me draw those in so you can see them. Let me find. I'm going to do it with my Sharpie. I'll have black lines on mine today, but don't, not my Sharpie. I mean, yes, my Sharpie. I picked up the wrong pen and said not my Sharpie, meaning that was not my Sharpie. <laughs> We'll get there. Meaning. All right. So, yeah, meaning. So, three and a half, four, four and a half. That's it. And listen, if you're real smart, you'll do this before you ever cut them apart. So, you'll put a whole sheet of cardstock. This is another tip. Put a whole sheet of cardstock in. Score all your score lines down the whole sheet and then cut them apart and oh my goodness, you can make these so fast. And somebody said you could use that little strip as a like a, a, a band to go around one of them. Um, it's a little too shy to go around, but... Too short? Yeah, it's a little short, but um, it might be. I don't know. We'll check it in a second. All right, now to make this easy, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Here's your score marks, okay? I'm going to take the middle score mark and I'm going to fold it in half, just on the middle one for now. And I'm going to go ahead and crease it um, and get it nice and creased. Then I want to take my ruler, and I've done the math on this one for you, but if you need to adjust, remember how I told you you might want to adjust this based on where your little pen dilly is? If yours is higher and you want to do it, matter of fact, well, I can do this one higher. I don't want to do this one higher. We might do the next one higher, but pay attention to where your little pen attacher is so you know where to put your little piece, but because I'm making it just like the one that was sent to me, I'm going to stick to that for now. So we're going to score, we're going to measure... Um, along this score line that's still exposed, we're going to measure down one and one eighth inch. And then I want to measure from the bottom one and one eighth inch. Now, listen, this is very forgiving here. You can, you can just eyeball this even as long as your pins, you know, as long as your little um, pin nibs will hold it. Okay. Or whatever that thing is called. All right. So where that one eighth inch mark is, we just made, I'm going to snip from the edge to my score mark and from the edge to my score mark. Okay. So that's all I've done. Folded it in half one time, made those little dudes there, okay? Now we're going to open this up. Now this is where you have to pay attention. <clears throat> one side is longer than the other. This is the back. This is where your post-it note holder will stick to, okay? That's important. Let's go ahead and fold all our score lines now, which you can fold them ahead of time. I just do it that way because it's easy for me to remember. Just make that one fold. Now Terry uh, asked about the, the weight of the card stock. Some of our admins have already answered, but this is a hundred pound cardstock from Brutus Monroe. Is it? I'm pretty sure that's correct. It's right that's here. what the admin said, so. Uh, okay. Why does it not say on here? I think it is a hundred pound. We might need to ask him to be sure. This is regular, this is Christopher's regular cardstock, not his not your mama cardstock. That one comes in white right now. So that's the thicker, thicker one. But and you could totally do that. 30 pound cardstock. Yeah, you could totally Crazy. do that. Insane. All right, check this out. So now what you're gonna do is take your finger and inside here, you want to um, poke out that piece that you cut. You want it to poke out and you want the two pieces beside it to go in. So see what I just did there? So I poked out the piece I cut, but I took the other two pieces to go in. Does that make sense? When you do that, now your edges line up. Because this bottom is half an inch longer, so it allows for this edge. If you may have questions about that, let me know. <clears throat> and then I we're going to glue this down. I think it makes sense. 
Okay, then we're going to glue this down, and here's where you glue it. You're going to glue inside this little section and this little section. That's it. So put your glue on there. And a little dab will do you, right? Well, except that I used this a while ago, and then we had visitors come in, and I left it sitting on my table without putting my pen in. And I was afraid it was going to dry up on me, but it, it let me go there. All right, so a little bit of glue right there, and you're just gluing that little flap down. That's it. You guys, This these can't be easier. No, not your mama is like 130 pound. See, we need to check that. I know not your mama is. It's 130 because the biggest one I've ever met was 120 pounds, and his is bigger than that. Yeah, the not your mama mm -hmm. is 130 pounds. I'm pretty sure it's 130, but I think his regular is either 100 or 110. I can't remember. We need to check into that. Okay, so here we go. See what we got here? Let's bring this one over so you can see. Same Amanda thing. Amanda said this is listed as 100 pounds. Okay, so that so this one I'm using is 100 pounds. All right, see this? We've done the same thing. The brown one might show up better. Let me show you here. All right. See that? Yeah. Okay. Now you just decorate it. Well, let's do this. So to put your little post-it note deal in, you have a couple of options. Okay. You can peel this backer off and stick it straight down in there. Or you can leave this backer on and glue this down. Now I'm going to do that. And I know a lot of you guys are not going to like that idea because it makes it more permanent. But here's the thing. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be gut level honest with you because I did the um, legal pad um, cover and I did not make it where you could remove the legal pad. You Once you used it, that was all you could use it just that one time. But here's why. We're making these from cardstock. These are not going to hold up forever. You're, this is not going to be something you can change out over and over. This is kind of a... Kind of a one-trick pony. Well, no, you know? let me just ask you this, because I, you know, I don't know much about this crafting thing, and I'm learning. Mm -hmm. it, if it's still good, once you finish, you have that one little piece of white stuff paper yeah. that's stuck down. All you got to do is put some more glue on it and stick another one on there, right? Yes, you absolutely can do that. But most of the time, unless you're just really, really, really gentle with things, <laughs> you're going to wear this out over time. If you're using this, it's going to wear out and it's going to be time to make a new one. And that's okay because you made it out of paper. But honestly, just like this piece is now glued in there, my whole little pad, I'm going to use all these off. And like Vince said, just stick it right back on there. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Because um, it is just paper. I will also tell you this. <laughs> If you are using, these are from Dollar General. They are not as sticky as the name brand. I want to be perfectly honest with you. This is not a place to scrimp. If you're giving this as a gift, I would buy actual name brand ones. They make a difference. You guys know this if you've used them before. We buy them in our office. These are crazy expensive, by the way. Did you know this about Post-it? Yes, they're not cheap. They're expensive. So we always buy the off-brand or whatever. They do not stick as well. The off-brands just aren't as good, okay? So if you're going to give this as a gift, spend a little money on that because this is super cheap. The paper part you're doing is cheap. Let's put some Christmas stuff on there. I'm going to use the Merry and Bright paper pad because I'm all about it lately. I think it's so cute. And any questions? I just talked all the way through all that. Oh, they're all just having fun. Good. All right, I'm going to pick out some papers. Picking out some papers. Not this one. Oh, the Santa's I feel like cute. I'm fixing to have to sneeze, so I'll just apologize. Back away from advance. that microphone. <laughs> oh, these little <laughs> strips. Bless you. These little strips would be cute on here. Let's see what else. I love this poinsettia. Excuse me. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Oh, this is cute, too. Candy stripes. Why do I have to look at every page before I decide? Ooh, I think I'm going to use this because it's a scrap. Yep, I'm going to use that up because I got a scrap of it. Ooh, this is cute, too. I might use that. Does everybody else have to look at every page? <laughs> that's probably... No, I wouldn't say that's just a you thing. I, I have to back. look at every single page. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I know I need a sheet that is three and a quarter by three and a quarter to layer on top of this, if you're going to layer it the way I am, okay? But you may not layer it that way. So I'm going to do... not Yeah, three and a quarter by three and a quarter to get myself a good square there. Okay. It's going to go here. Oh, that's cute on there, isn't it? Look at the foil. I love it. All right. And then I'm going to decide what sticker I want to put on and how I want to put it. So, ooh, those are pretty. That was is so cute. I think that's too tall. Let me see. Gosh, it's just exact. I don't know. I don't want to use that one there, but this one would be cute on there. That little tree right there is cute. Look at that little tree. This is literally how I do it. Look at Santa like he's given a gift. That's a cute idea. To do that one, like he's given a gift. Because this is going to be like a gift, but I'm going to put him back because I think I changed my mind. Um, we could be here a while. Warning. <laughs> I'm looking through stickers. 
warning. We, oh, will this guy fit? Because if he will, we might not. Oh, I'm done. Done, done, done. It didn't take as long as you thought. I said we could be here a while, but we weren't. All right, I'm going to put him on. But I think I also want to put a little strip so he'll really pop up. And I might put a sentiment. Is there a sticker sentiment I want to use? Because I like sticker sentiments. I like them a lot. Let's see. Oh, season's greeting. Merry Christmas to you. That might be cute on there, huh? Next to my snowman. Let's leave it out for a second. Making spirits bright. This is a great place to stamp, too. I just have no stamps out. We just came back, like I said, and I haven't pulled anything out. I just sat down and thought, this is great. Okay, I know this is three and a quarter wide, so I'm going to cut this strip three and a quarter wide. And I think I'll cut it... Let's see how wide this sticker is. Um, I'm going to cut this an inch and a half wide. Inch and a half by three and a quarter. So right there. While she's cutting that, Michelle, you can send the recipe to me, vinnie at maymaymadeit.com. V-I-N-N-I-E at maymaymadeit.com. And All that'll right. get it to me. So just imagine these little pieces. Just think of them like you do your card making. So, like, if I put that little strip right there, which I'll probably pop, I'm going to pop something up, probably that. Then I'm going to put this little guy here, and then I think this is going to go here. So, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick, ooh, don't tear your little snowman candy cane off. Okay. I'm going to put this down. <laughs> little butterfinger today, huh? Did you see me catch it? I was like, uh, okay. All right, I'm going to put this straight down here, right here on this edge. Merry Christmas to you. Now we're going to play with some foam. Just gotta We're pop it up. Foam. Yeah, we gotta pop it up. Foam me up, Scotty. Now I'm giving. If I'm imagining this as a gift, okay, I'm not gonna skimp on my foam here. I'm gonna run it, you know, almost the whole way across. You really should probably run it all the way across, so it'll be nice and sturdy. And um, that anytime you're giving a gift, you know what I'm saying? You want to think about that if you want it to last any length of time. All right, and then I'm gonna put this guy here, kind of line that up, and having that little lift separates the two you could have i could have cut another cardstock to put behind there will this come off i'm gonna do it hindsight i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it y'all got it no problem you know what else i'm gonna use that strip we had left because this girl knows how to use scraps <laughs> i'm gonna use this little strip i'm gonna run some glue right here just like so then I'm going to run this down here just like this. And I'm going to decide how wide I want it when I flip it over. Let's see. Oh, that's too wide. Let's come down. Dun, dun, dun. Like that. Then I'm going to trim off this. Now, you don't have to use the strip. You could just cut a whole piece for this. But I just think if you got it, if it's sitting there, why not, right? It's what I think. And then this one. Ooh, somebody's yelling at me, cut that strip down. I like the wide strip, but if you make one and you like a thinner strip, do a thinner strip. That's the beauty of crafting. All right. And you know why that is? So many people struggle with hiding paper. Look, there's a comment about hiding paper. I don't struggle with it. I like that little bit showing out, and I'm happy with it. But listen, it you got to do you with your crafting. I think this looks good. This is how I would like it, so... I'm okay with it. I want that pattern in the back, and I'm good with it like that. But if you're not, please do what you need to do. Make it any way you want it. I'm This just me. I'm doing me. It's just paper, too. It's so, just I mean, paper. You know, hey, if people want to do it their way, they can, can't they? It, I, I, everybody has their way. Everybody has their way. And I respect everyone's way. That's even better. I respect everybody's way. If that's how you craft, craft that way. So, I am... You ain't mad at them. I am not a... What's the word? <laughs> I am not a person who says... I'd rather you craft the way you want to craft than don't craft at all. You know what I'm saying? The important thing is they get an inspiration. I did. I put that too high. I should have paid attention. Let me cut some of this off. I want him to have pretty good coverage. And I might even cut some little pieces to really uh, give him even better coverage. I really should be paying attention to this. Hold on a second. Let's put this guy up here. This will make me feel better. There we go. All right, and then let's see how far down I can stick him. Something like that. I'm good with that, actually. That's so cute! Oh, I didn't peel my backer off my foam tape. Did y'all see that? Of course you did. It's live. 
Look, I'm just reach right there and get it. I kept thinking, why is his hat not sticking? <laughs> Angel asked, how do you keep your scissors clean while cutting your foam tape? These are nonstick. These so, are the coated nonstick. Um, they say nonstick, but you know what I got on there? What is that that I got on there? I was using it the other day. Oh, Snow Rider. I got some Snow Rider on it. That'll stick till you wash it off. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. All right, so there's this one. And then I'm going to stick this down here, but I'm going to stick it straight down. I'm not going to foam it up. I've already got enough foam on there. All right, then. Glue, 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 glue. I know it looks like I'm using a lot, but I'm scratching it on the surface. I would love having this at a Christmas party. It is absolutely perfect for favors. And this is something that people wouldn't buy somewhere. You know, this wouldn't be something they'd be able to go out and just purchase. I'm going to lay this down to get it glued down. And you wouldn't have those black lines on yours. That's just because I was showing you how to score it. So look how stinking cute and how easy that is. Can you imagine how fast you could push these out? I mean, honestly. Oh, I want that on the front. You can do it either way, but I like the pin facing up. Just look how stinking cute that is. I mean, how many times, how many places could you use it? Imagine, I think I saw somebody say um, baby shower. Did somebody say baby shower? I think. And then what's some other places you could use it? What do I clean my, I never have to, gosh, y'all, if I do clean, if I clean any blades, it's usually with hand sanitizer. I keep hand sanitizer pretty close and I think it works so great to clean stuff anyway. So, um, especially adhesives and I'll tell you something else. If you have, somebody said theirs gets sticky, get some squeaky clean. That squeaky clean will clean sticky off. And even if, like if you do this and you open your scissors up and you spray some squeaky clean and let it sit, you know, spray some, let it sit, that is the way to get stuff off of stuff. Squeaky Clean does everything. And remember, we're announcing a sale after this, so it'll be the time to pick it up. Somebody said, oh, teacher gifts. Good idea, Tracy. What a great teacher gift, actually. And you could say, like, you're the best, or put a big apple on the front, or not apples, by the way, for teachers. You don't always have to do apples. <laughs> I have a lot of teacher friends, and I always say to them, do you love getting apple gifts? And they're like, look, we love getting every gift, but I have every apple thing known to man. <laughs> what I hear all the time you know they do so you don't have to use apples you can use anything what's another way to use it bridal showers good idea Somebody um said name tags for table placement place cards great idea and if you do it that way sorry I took a drink and I was trying to talk at the same time if you do it that way they not only get something with their name you know they not only get a place card they also get something with their name on it for your um, church group is brilliant um, oh, someone said, somebody mentioned that, did someone ask, um, about these pens? I got, I got this one from the one that was sent to me. I have not bought any yet, but what I did was I went out on Amazon and I looked up some mini, I, I looked up mini gel pens. This is a gel pen. I looked up mini, M-I-N-I gel pens. And then I put three different links in the description. They're not exactly these. They're just some that you could use. Oh, a Sunday school teacher gift, random act of kindness, a boss gift, a Christmas part, stocking stuffer. stuffer. Um, so there is a link below in the description right now if you want to go get the pens from Amazon. Although this one says the word Staples on it, so I'm assuming it came from Staples. Yeah, somebody commented earlier that Staples sell those. Yeah, this one. But look, um, Walmart has them. And Mandy was telling me today, I think Mandy told me, Dollar Tree or Dollar General, I think. Um, oh, classmates, like children's classmates. This is great to be not a candy gift. Um, and also, you could totally make an envelope for this and mail it. It'd be a little more expensive, and you'd have to make your own envelope. But you could mail this, and this would be super cute. You could make this kind of like a card. And listen, if you added a page here where this flipped, it could be a card. You know what I'm saying? Oh, your Bunko group. That's so cute. And make them all dicey. That would be so cute. So cute. I love that. Several in a basket as dinner favors. Women's retreat gifts. I There's so many things you can make them for. And you actually did this within your time frame. I did it in 30 minutes. You still have five oh, and more look, minutes. <laughs> we could whip these up same way. I, if I were making multiples, I would score all my paper at one time. I would do it all at one time. And remember, you get three from one piece of cardstock. So you can really push these out for presents. You really can. I think it's brilliant. I'm glad that it was sent to me. I, I've seen these before. As a matter of fact, did Lisa, 
What did Lisa make at the Make It Go Round? Hers was a post-it note. I think hers was a stand. I think hers was a little stand. I know she did something with post-it notepads. Um, boo for no candy. What are we, what are we adults supposed to eat? <laughs> what are we supposed to go through and tell the kids we're protecting them from? <laughs> um, oh gosh, it's candy and treat season, y'all. Bus driver gifts. This would be good to have on the dash, you know, so you could make notes and send home with the kids to say, little Josh got in trouble today. Or <laughs> Why did I pick Josh? I had four names to go from when I picked Josh. Nancy said... Uh, that their bunco group is called Dicey Dames. That's so cute. I like that. Oh, a gift for your mail carrier. I love that. A post-it for the postal worker. I love that. For your mail carrier, it's a good idea. The I put a link to them. Um, they aren't these pins, okay? The ones I put below. Yeah, here's what. If I show it, I better not show it. Not right now. <laughs> I better not show that until I can get Lisa's permission to, uh, and she may have it on her channel. Y'all can go check out Lisa's channel. I don't know if she does, so I'm not showing you that yet. But look, the ones I linked are the little, I like these, but my favorite gel pen are the G2s. And the ones I linked in the description are the mini G2s. My kids only use G2s at school. They ask for those pens. Vince asked for those pens. That's what we like. Like that's their favorite pen. So I linked the little mini ones and, um, they, and they'll fit in here too. And they would be perfect. They, they come in a big old pack. And they're all they're all black if you want that. Um, we had a question from Lisa. Lisa wants to know how thick is Scotty. Scotty is about a sixteenth of an inch. Yep, a sixteenth of an inch. She said it looks thicker than her sixteenth of an inch one. That just goes to prove that everything looks bigger on camera. <laughs> so if you ever see me on camera somewhere, you know I'm about a hundred pounds lighter than what you're looking at. <laughs> I wish it really did work that way because I'd, I'd like to be 100 pounds lighter. That's it. If you see us on camera, we're really smaller than we look. <laughs> Lisa's YouTube channel is Have Photos Will Scrapbook. Um, I love the G2 pens. They, I usually have one in here. Hang on. Usually, They're usually everywhere. They're usually all over the place. Um, yeah, the Zebra's a good pen too. So, yeah, that just goes to show that things... That, but I do tell y'all, it always looks like I'm using more glue, too. If you saw... Like, Vince has told y'all before, in real life, I'm not using anywhere near as much glue as it looks like in the camera. You've seen that, hadn't you? Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm using this thick bead of glue, and I'm really not. So, uh, have photos, will, scrapbook. That's Lisa. Do you have a um, link for her? Okay, Sherry says, it really does, Mamie. When I first started making cards and got the measurements, I was shocked. They look huge on video. They do. For example, look at this. This looks big. If I move my hand and you just see a, you just see it, it looks big, right? When you put the measurement to it, you see it's four inches. So it is. It really is um, crazy how that kind of messes with our head like that. Yes, I have seen these done for craft fairs. Let me tell y'all what Terry's talking about. I've seen these done at craft fairs where they make them and then they put them in these little plastic bags and you can either tie them with a bow or you can make a little um, a little piece that goes on the top to close them up and sell them like this. That's a really good idea too. Thank you, Birdie, for checking my channel first. Thank you. Um, it is a cute idea. It was sent to me. Look at this one. On this one, they did a little camera with the little thing and she even put this on here. Isn't that cute? It's just a little thingy. By the way, I found these at Dollar General the other day for a dollar. A dollar? <laughs> you knew I was going to do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I found these little minis. I was going to use them for something else. But when you see something like this, you grab it for your stash, right? This doesn't do anything. It's just cute on there. So you can just click it, clip it on there, clip it over here. They're just cute, right? Um, how much would I pay for one of these? You want me to be real honest with you? Let me be so gut level honest. You ready for this? I wouldn't because I'd say, oh, I can make that. Y'all know I'm that person. You are most definitely that person. Oh, I can make that. But I would probably... Now, okay, let me tell you my rule for selling things. The, my formula. My formula is cost of materials plus labor equals price. Most crafters do cost of materials. And they stop because they don't think their labor is worth anything. And that's just crazy. This is a whole other topic. But I literally would do 
the cost. Here's how I figure out my labor too. Some people ask me about this. Here's the deal. If I want to make $10 an hour and it takes me five minutes, literally like time yourself. Okay. If it takes me five minutes to make this, I would divide $10. How do you do that? $10 by 60 minutes. Correct. Math man. $10 by 60 minutes. Are you wanting me to divide that? Well, I'm saying that's how I do it. I'd figure out what, what I make per minute. If I want to make $10, okay, what then I make per minute. you would $10 by 60 minutes. Uh-huh. And then I would multiply it by how many minutes it took me to do this. So it'd be, it'd be materials plus labor equals cost, okay? But sometimes, even that's really too expensive. But, I mean, too, it's too low. But if you're making your money back, you know what I'm saying? And you're, getting, you're paying yourself your time, that's just how I do it. You got to charge yourself labor. So I'd have to do all the math on this. I would literally... Put my pen cost in here. I would put my paper cost in. And how would I get my paper cost? I'd take my red card stock. If it comes in a 20 pack, I divide the price by 20 and then I divide it by three because I get three from a sheet. Does this make sense? Um, and that's how I do it. I want to make a certain dollar amount per hour and that's how I do it. Put your label in there. I mean, put your labor in there. You're building it. You're, it's your talent that's doing it. You pay an oil change man for his labor. You know what I'm saying? You pay um, a doctor for their labor. You pay, and so why wouldn't you get your labor? That's how you do it. I'm not going to get on a soapbox. I've already. I'm getting down now. <laughs> uh, Jody, you can set your price whatever you want if you enjoy the process and and you're fine with that. That's fine. But I'm just saying, don't don't sell yourself short. You have a talent. Okay, so when you buy a piece of art, when you buy a painting. You pay more for the talent than you do the materials. Have you ever thought about that? When I purchase my favorite, my favorite artist to collect art from, he's not necessarily my favorite artist, but I like to collect his art, is Thomas Kincaid. He does not spend to make that painting what I spend to buy it. You know what I'm saying? You pay for the talent. Now, I know there's diff I know it's different, okay? I know that's different, but... um. If I was at a craft fair and those were sold, I'd pay $10. See, miss. But then again, let me tell you something. Joan knows what goes into this because she would also be paying for the love that it took to make it because she's a crafter, right? See, all right. Buying brand name, post-it notes and good quality card stock and decorations. I usually price them three each or two for five. See, I'm, I think that might be too cheap. I think $3. It depends on what you can get your post-it notes for because they are not cheap, y'all. Don't sell yourself short. But listen, I don't sell at craft fairs, so I'm not one to ask. I tried that, and it did not work for me, and I moved away from it. Craft fairs, craft fairs and I, I will go shop at one, and I will buy things, and I will enjoy the experience, but I don't want to run a booth anymore. I've done that. I actually have a video series on my channel about it. Do you remember that? You were in mm -hmm. it. Do you remember? That was back when I made you act in the hallway. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see. Sometimes if you charge too little, then people, that's true. Like, did y'all know I used to sell cars? <laughs> and when I was in the car business, we were always taught to sell the value, not the product. We would sell the value of the product. So if you're, you know, if you're looking at something and you're trying to explain to somebody what it's worth, you all know that something's only worth what somebody will pay for it. Y'all know this, right? So you can explain the value. Um... Oh, craft fairs didn't work for you either. They didn't work for me. Could you create a pocket in the back to slip the piece? Sure you could. Again, I said this. You guys go with what you want, but I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'm going to wear this thing out. I, it's going to be so worn by the time I get through using it that it doesn't bother me if this is not replaceable. That was one of the biggest comments on my legal pad um, thing. But I thought, if you know how I use a legal pad and how I put it in my bag and how, I mean, you might not do that, but I use it. You're rough on one. I use that stuff. And by the time I'm done, it's time to make another one. And I use that for an excuse to make another one because I like it. Um, please, is there room on the inside flat for a mini calendar or would that be too bulky? It wouldn't be too bulky. Just make yourself, matter of fact, a bit, oh, you mean like a yearly calendar or you mean one that you stack up and put on there? You probably could do that. Okay, so, oh, did you have a question? I did. Barbara wants to know if you don't have a scoreboard, how would you score the paper? Like this. All right, I would take my ruler, 
and I work like this. You don't have to work this way. I do because when the when I can't get overhead, I can't see unless I do it this way. So I take my paper and I would line my ruler up at the edge and I would make a mark at three and a half, uh, four, and four and a half. Okay, so there's my marks. I'd flip it over and I do the same thing, but it's going to be a little different because now, because it's shorter on one end than the other. So I think I would just turn my ruler and do it the same to make it easier because it's a little different. So I'm going to turn my ruler where I'm measuring from the bottom this time. And I'm going to make a mark at three and a half, at four, and at four and a half. Okay. Then I'm going to line those up. I did pretty decent there. And if you have a grid, use your grid to help you even get everything lined up really nice and straight. So do it like this. And then, let me see if I have anything to show you. Either your bone folder, if you have one, okay? If you don't have a bone folder, I need a pen with a, with a lid that pulls off. I don't have one in here. Hmm. Oh, look, here's a G2. I knew I had one in here. It's right here. Oh, this will work. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to use the end of this pen. I'm going to lay it sideways next to my ruler and crease it onto the paper. And I did that three times. Then I'm going to go to the next measurement. Same thing. And I'm going to do it three times so I can get a good crease in there. The a thing to use is like a butter knife or a, um, what else can you use besides a butter knife? Anything dull. I started to say a screwdriver, but it probably would cut because it's got sharp edges. Then what you do, here's the trick. Don't pick this up and try to do it. Somebody's coming in with something. Perfect. Amanda's coming in the door. Look, I would use this lid, this lid, and I would score with it like that. See? Okay, then what I would do, I wouldn't pick this up to fold it. I would leave my ruler in place, and I would fold it like that and let that help. Because then you get a nice straight even one, even if your scoring's not perfect. Like so. And then like so. Okay, so you got your lines. Then we're going to do this. And look, remember how I told you you don't really have to measure it? Where'd my scissors go? Here they are. Right here. I'm going to line this guy up. Hold it nice and straight. And then I'm just going to make my snips. And I'm just eyeballing it. So if you're making this at home, you can even make yourself a pattern. You know, a template. Y'all know I'm all about templates. Because I don't like to sit down and remeasure. I just don't like it. All right. And then that goes out and these go in. See that? Out and in. Glue this down. You don't need fancy tools, guys. You can think outside the box. Right? I like my fancy tools. That's why I use them. But you don't have to have them. I think, like my daddy used to say, every job is easier when you have the right tool for it. And for me, it is. But if it's not, if you don't have it, don't let that be the reason you don't do it. Because look, that looks exactly the same. No one would know you didn't have a fancy scoreboard and an embossing tool. And would they? Nobody'd know. Right? It looks the same. It looks the same. Nobody's going to know. So that's how I do it. Um, lots of suggestions in the, um, you can, you can use a paper clip to score it. Yes, you can. The other thing you can do, <laughs> what? You don't really have to score it. Let's do this. All right, let's make our measures again. Get that lined up on that end. Come in just a little bit. Where's my pen? You know, you so, were doing good on time. I know, but I want to help everybody. I don't want anybody to feel like they can't make these. There's those. Flip this around. And remember, I'm going to measure from the bottom this time because I want my measurements to line up. So three and a half. I don't want anybody to leave and go, I can't do that. I don't have those tools. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, watch this. Line these little marks up. I am going to put it on here. I am going to at least put it straight. Line your little marks up. Pick it up. Fold it. Go to the next one. Line your marks up. Pick it up. Hold it. Go to the next one. Listen. There is a way around everything. <laughs> and then fold it in half. Do your snips. I did not get as good of a line. I will tell y'all, it's not as creased as well. But you can fix that too because you can train paper or cardstock. So there's that. All right. And then I'm going to snip. Snip. Push this piece out, those pieces in. 
It's not the same. You do have to do a little more like creasing and stuff. Okay. And then glue here. Glue here. Close that down. And we did it with zero tools. And if you don't have the bone folder, just use a butter knife or something to crease with. Or if the, I've used a pencil or a ruler. There you go. How about that? I think that works, right? Just boom. It's done. It's done. Three of them that quick. And that's from one sheet of cardstock. And using paper packs. This is my favorite. This is my favorite tip ever. Using paper packs, let the stickers and the paper do the work for you. Will this fit on one? Look how cute that is. You know? Let the stickers, let the paper do the work for you. So if I were going to invest, I'd invest in the paper that come with stickers. Or the chipboard accent pieces would be really cute too. All right, I hope that helped out. We're going to sign off from here and head to the Crafter After Show, but I'm going to give uh, Tamitha some time to get the Crafter After Show link in here for you guys. And I got a lot of stuff to tell you about on the Crafter After Show because we have a bazillion events coming up. And we have a lot of, um, we don't have a lot of new product, but we do have some stuff that's come back in stock you guys have been wanting. And we have a sale to announce. And um, I have a big event to announce you're going to be happy about. There's so much that I need to tell you about in the Crafter After Show. So we're going to head out. Here's the deal about this, guys. If you make these guys, okay, I want to see them. I don't say that just for the heck of it. I want to see what you're doing. I'm so inspired by seeing what you guys take and how you run with this. You'll do so much with these in your own crafting. So head to our customer gallery, which is on our website. It's under more. On the top bar of the website, there's a word more. Hover over more. It drops down. It'll say gallery. Click on gallery and you can share with us what you're doing. And we want to see it because it makes my day. Plus, Tamitha told me this weekend, we have now reached over 2,000 inspirational photos on our customer gallery. Vince, over 2,000. That's a bunch. 2,000 projects to inspire you. It's like our very own Pinterest. How cool. It is really cool. So head over there and share them because I really want to see them. And we're going to head to the Crafter After Show. There's the link right there in the chat. All you got to do is click on that, and we'll be there in just a few minutes. Love you guys. See you in a sec. Bye. Bye.